This video is sponsored by bootcamp.com. Check it out for INBDE prep and use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here and welcome back to our dental anatomy series. This video is going to be focused on the mandibular canine. So here we have a picture of the permanent mandibular canine and using the universal tooth numbering system as we've done throughout the series. This would include tooth number 22 and 27. First, I wanna set the scene for this video. So this tooth has some similarities to the maxillary canine. So instead of going over every single similarity, I'm gonna focus on and highlight the things that distinguish this tooth from the maxillary canine. So one important distinguishing feature is that the mesial surface of the crown tends to form a straight line with the mesial surface of the root. And this straight, let's call it mesial alignment, is almost parallel to the long axis of the tooth. This is very different from the maxillary canine. Now, in contrast, that distal surface is going to be more convex than the mesial surface, which is usually the case for most teeth in the mouth. Also, unlike the maxillary canine, the cusp tip is typically mesial to the long axis of the tooth instead of in line with it. Now, this is similar. The mesial cusp ridge is slightly shorter than the distal cusp ridge. And a fun fact for this tooth, this is the tooth with the longest crown incisocervically of all teeth in the mouth. Also from the facial aspect, we look at the mesial and distal height of contours, same as a bunch of teeth that we've already seen. Mesial height of contour is at the junction of incisal and middle thirds. Distal height of contour is in the middle third. Now, as opposed to the maxillary canine and every other tooth that we've talked about so far for that matter, the root apex is typically very straight. About 45% of the time, it's going to be straight. 29% it's gonna to curve to the mesial and 26% of the time curve to the distal. The same as the maxillary canine, we have these developmental depressions separating the crown into thirds and the distal developmental depression is a little bit deeper. But don't forget about these imbrication lines that we talked about in the first video. Imbrication lines are common at the junction of the cervical and middle thirds of the crown for this tooth. I guess this drawing ended up looking kind of like a smiley face. But anyway, let's move on. So as you can see from the lingual aspect, you can see a lot of the mesial and distal crown and root surfaces because there's a lot of taper towards the lingual. We see this in many of the teeth. You can even see the linear developmental depressions or root flutes on the mesial and distal surfaces. And those root flutes are providing more surface area for a stronger periodontal ligament attachment. The incisors usually have a lingual fossa, but just like the maxillary canine, we see a lingual ridge instead of a fossa that separates a mesial and distal triangular fossa. But despite all of this anatomy, it's relatively flat, which is another good way to distinguish it from the maxillary canine, which had much more prominent lingual anatomy. All right, this is a big one. The cusp tip falls lingual relative to the long axis. Remember, that's a common feature of all anterior mandibular teeth, once again, differentiating it from the maxillary canine where the cusp tip fell facial relative to the long axis. Another cool distinguishing feature of this tooth, I know there's a lot of them in this video, is what we're going to call the shark arc. That's this continuous convex facial surface from crown to root. And we have another deep root flute that I mentioned before on this tooth but the root is already pretty skinny to begin with. So I'll explain why that's important later when we talk more about the root specifically. So this slide should sound very repetitive from what you've seen before, but comparing the distal aspect to the mesial aspect, 
The distal developmental depressions are going to be deeper. The CEJ or cervical line is going to be flatter. And we also have that concave distofacial line angle, similar to the concavity near the cervical line that I talked about with the maxillary canine, causing that large gingival embrasure. Now, once again, all mandibular anterior teeth are wider facial-lingually than mesiodistally, as you can appreciate from this incisal view. We see the cingulum is slightly off to the distal surface, just like it is for all anterior teeth, and the cusp tip is off to the lingual and the mesial, like we talked about before. Kind of like the mandibular lateral incisor, the crown is twisted distally on its root base in order to fit into a tighter mandibular arc relative to the maxillary arch, which is a bit broader and wider. All right, now about the pulp. So since we have one cusp, we will have one pulp horn, just like the maxillary canine, nice and easy. Now remember the deep root flutes we talked about on both sides? Those can be deep enough with the already thin and narrow root to essentially split the pulp canal into a facial and lingual canal. This can happen about 5% of the time. I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually a little bit more than that. Now, just like the maxillary canine, although the crown had this kind of asymmetric diamond shape from the incisal view, if we cut the tooth in cross-section at the middle of its root, we would see an oval shape. Both canines have oval cross-sections. Now, this is the only anterior tooth that might legitimately have a bifurcated root. You can see that in this x-ray here, where that root literally splits into a facial and lingual root. And it also has the longest root of any mandibular tooth. Both canines have the longest roots in their respective arches. All right, so a summary of the mandibular canine, that incisocervical dimension is greater than facial-lingual, which is greater than mesiodistal. It has that characteristic shark arc. It's a pentagon from the facial view, triangular from the side view, diamond from the incisal view, but oval at the cross-section, and it primarily consists of four lobes, one pulp horn, and one canal. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons for their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.